Welcome back. Well, we're going to put these 270 Winchester cases aside for a moment, and we're going to have a serious discussion about powder selection. As I mentioned earlier, powder choice and how much you put in the case is at the top of the food chain. There's a hierarchy to accuracy issues, and that's at the top. Everything else is subordinate to that. The primer selection, bullet seating depth, case neck turning, deburring of flash holes, no matter what else it is, everything comes after which powder you put in the case. That's the propulsion for your bullet to get down range, and it stands to reason that if you don't put the right powder in, if you don't put the right correct charge in, you're going to have difficulties with accuracy and performance. You may not be getting the velocity that you want. So, or you may have dangerous pressures, you may have, you may have all kinds of issues. So, we have to have a talk about powder selection. I did a special video on powder selection some time ago, but we're talking about accuracy ammunition, so I want to delve into that again. It's not, it's not a complicated issue. Um, very frequently people will you know, they'll ask, they'll ask somebody else, might be some, somebody in the family they'll ask that has had uh, good success with a given cartridge. They might go online and they may just sim simply go to a blog site and type in the question and everybody's going to respond with their own, with their own particular recipe. First of all, the, the first standard rule is you never ever, under any circumstances, use anybody else's load without verifying that it comes from a legitimate source. In other words, from a powder manufacturer or a bullet manufacturer's published data. Even, even going to a magazine and, and seeing a load that's written in some writer's article, it may be a misprint. You, you've got to be very, very careful, and, and it may not be the best load in the world at all. It certainly might be a dangerous load, even if it comes from a recognized author. Always verify it with published loading data from a reliable source. And I don't mean published because somebody, some other individual published it, but I'm talking about something from a laboratory source. So anyway, I first recommend, you know, the reason I recommend this book is because this is a compilation. This is not, this is not one particular powder manufacturer's data, and it's not one bullet manufacturer's data. This is a compilation of all the different powder manufacturers, most of the powder manufacturers out there, and this is listed in order of, in, in, or ranked in order of velocity, highest velocity being at the top of each bullet, of each bullet weight and in each cartridge, which is a really handy thing to have because by looking at that at a glance, you can see what the performance levels are from top to bottom. And what's most important, and I'll show you what manual this is, this is, this is the, I think this is probably about the latest uh, publication, but this is uh, the uh, Modern Reloading by Richard Lee. Um, I use all sorts of books, but when I'm trying to develop a particular powder charge, and I, you know, I've never worked with a cartridge before, or maybe I want to try a different powder, this is a source I go to. And the way I use this is I turn to, I turn to the cartridge first of all, and I find the median bullet weight. In other words, looking at this, looking at this book here in the 270 Winchester, I can see that the lowest bullet weight is 90 grains, and it goes right on up from there to 160, even 180 grains. That's a very uncommon, that's a very uncommon bullet weight that you'd have to have a particularly, you'd have to have a custom uh, barrel with a very fast twist in order to handle 180 grain bullets. So, the median bullet weight happens to be the standard bullet that is probably the most common, most popular bullet weight in the 270 is 130 grain. If you're talking about a 30 caliber bullet like the uh, 308 or the 3006, you're probably talking 150, 165 grain bullets. Those are the median weight bullets because the, you know what you're, what you're looking for is a powder that will span the bottom to the top range of bullet weights. Throughout, the, throughout all the bullet weights that are usable in that cartridge, you're looking for the powders that will serve not necessarily the best for each of those bullet weights, but the powder that's capable of propelling each of those bullet weights without either being too fast or too slow. Within that particular 
group of powders, you're going to find the powder that is probably going to give you the top accuracy. Not only that, it comes with a bonus that if you should change bullet weights, all you have to do is go to your same powder and you, you've got a handy powder all, already available. Again, it may not be the very best, but at least it's a very, very universal powder for that cartridge. So, if you, if you check if you check the median bullet weight, in this case it's a 130 grain bullet weight, you're going to find that certain powders do appear across the chart. They're, they're, they're standard powders such as IMR, which means Improved Military Rifle Powder. That's been a, that was a military rifle powder that was developed by DuPont many, many decades ago. And, um, but, and there's, they're extruded powders. But the IMR powders like 4350, uh, IMR 48, uh, 4831, and their, their Hodgdon equivalents, Hodgdon uh, 4350 and 4831. And um, you're going to find also some spherical powders in there that are in the same category, such as Winchester uh, 760 ball powder and its, and its uh, Hodgdon equivalent, which is H414 powder. Those powders, and you may even find some others, such as uh, IMR 4064, and uh, let me check and see what else you might have in there. Um, you have, uh, oh, those are the powders I mentioned, uh, Accurate 4350, IMR 4895. Most of those powders you're going to find will be suitable in throughout all the different bullet weights in that in that particular cartridge. Now we're just talking about the 270 Winchester as an example because that's what I happen to be loading here. In that medium bullet weight, you're probably going to see in any cartridge you're going to find certain powders that are not they that do not span the various bullet weights. And those powders are often the ones that give the very highest velocity in that, in that median bullet weight. But those are probably not the powders that you want to immediately rush to. Um, if, we, if we're talking about accurate, accurate uh, charges, you're talking about a, a powder which is inherently versatile within the cartridge so that it's not fussy. When you have a powder that just only operates at that median bullet weight, you're going to find that it, it can tend to be very fussy and it's probably not going to have, it's not going to have the, the very best accuracy. And besides, you're not, right now we're, we're looking for super accurate loads. And super accurate loads are not always, they're, they're very seldom the top velocity loads. Top velocity loads, sometimes like in the 270 Winchester, you can get certain, you can get certain powders that will drive a bullet 150 feet per second beyond the standard velocities that are typically achieved with the 270. And those, those velocities are fantastic if you happen to be doing some, you know, big game hunting. You're not, you're not necessarily interested in, in whether or not the, the group size is super small. You, you're, you're, shooting at, you're shooting at an elk, you're shooting at a, you know, mule deer or something like that. And, you know, it's, you're not shooting at prairie dogs and you're not trying to, you're not trying to get those tiny uh, uh, X-ring groups. So, looking for the very, very best powders, stick to the powders that operate throughout the range of bullet weights. Now, uh, and you can, you can go, generally speaking, those are going to be listed in the, in the top third, top fourth of the top third of the median bullet weight powders. The next thing you want to do is to make sure, if you're looking for an accurate powder and a, and a really reliable powder for any given uh, cartridge, make sure you stick with the extruded single base powders. Your extruded powders are the ones that look like little macaroni, they look like little logs, and they, they, if you look very, very carefully with a, with a uh, magnifying glass, you'd see a pinhole down the middle of them. How that ever gets there, I don't know. But uh, because they burn not only from the outside in, but the inside out, and that controls their burn rate, one of the aspects of controlling burn rate. They differ, those, and they're called single base because they, they basically made nitrocellulose, but your double base powders also contain uh, an additive of nitroglycerin. So uh, your double base powders are your spherical powders, 
Olin Winchester's name for spheric, spheric, spherical powders is ball powders, capital B A L L. Ball powders are terrific for, oftentimes they produce fantastic accuracy, but they are very well known for being very, very particular about the charge. And not only are they very particular about the charge, but they're also particular about certain pressure environments, certain environmental situations such as temperature, internal temperature of the cartridge case. So as the temperature, the ambient temperature of the air is hot on a hot day, uh, those powders can tend to spike in pressure. And if you happen to develop your loads on a warm day, on a day when you're in the 80s or something like that, and then you go hunting someplace where you're down into the uh, 20s and 30s, the powder may not perform as accurately at that point because they are very, very fussy. Uh, they're pressure sensitive and they're heat temperature sensitive. So I tend to avoid, for any, for any super accurate loads, I tend to avoid spherical powders. They have, they have terrific advantage of being very easy to, easy to dispense. You know, if you're, if you're using a dispenser such as this, or if you happen to be dispensing from, a, you know, from an automated uh, reloading system, if you're not necessarily hand loading, but if you're reloading a lot of cartridges, like I, I use CFE 223 a lot with, you know, with my uh, ammunition that I load for the 223 Remington or the 5.56 NATO, whichever. Th those, those spherical powders not only serve me very well, they serve the government very well because of the same reasons. They, they very, they're very good at repeating the same charge over and over again in automated systems. But again, you know, the military is not that concerned about shooting bug hole groups. They just want to have reliable ammunition and they want to have ammunition that produces the highest velocities. We're not, there's our boy. He came down to see me. Um, so we're looking for super accurate loads. And super accurate loads are generally found with the, with the extruded powders, single base powders. And uh, th those have been historically the popular powders amongst the, the, you know, the guys that sit at the bench and they're shooting at 100 and 200 yards. They're not trying to hit gongs. They're not trying to, they're not trying to score X-rings. They're trying to, they're trying to put all the bullets into one particular hole, the size of the bullet. And those are the powders that have been traditional for those, for those shooters. And their names are legendary. You know, IMR 4064, uh, 4198, 4350, 4831, all these different powders that they use. And there's some new, there's some newer uh, powders out there that uh, Hodgson has developed for the bench rest community. And those are all terrific and they're all designed to have those stable qualities especially uh, heat insensitivity, so that they're not, so they don't range off the charts just because it happens to get to be a, a 95 degree day during a competition. Um, we'll talk about how to uh, put the uh, charges together. Um, if, you know, you, you could be one of two different sorts of individuals that I'm talking to. You may already have a, a powder charge and a particular powder that you're fond of, and all you're trying to do is it to fine tune the loads with all the other different things that I've been showing you. But for the person who hasn't yet developed that load, uh, you can follow the recommendations that I've given previously, and I'll just briefly describe. Uh, segregate, your, segregate your brass uh, in groups, if you've got, you got 20 cases, segregate the, the brass in groups of four. I like four because that gives you three to shoot into a group and it gives you one extra in case you happen to drop one out of the, just, you, you just, you know that you pulled the trigger wrong, uh, you, you jerked it or whatever, or you, you, your bag slipped or something. You, it gives you an extra one. And it also gives you, what I, what I like to have is an extra one so I can fire a composite group. It's a, it's a real confidence builder. Because if you've got, you got five different charges, incremental charges going up in, in graduations of uh, weight, if you've got five of them and you take one from each of, that, from each of those uh, groups and fire them into one group and you find that you have a really nice tight group, what does that tell you? That, 
that tells you that even if you should, even if your, your, your loading process isn't as exacting as you'd like it to be, even if you think that maybe, uh, you know, I, 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 I might not have gotten all those grains of powder exactly the same, you'll, you'll see quickly that, you know, if, you, if, if each of those uh, charges varies by a half a, a half a grain, and yet they all went into a tight group, that gives you the great confidence to know that that's a super accurate load. So we're not looking, uh, we're not looking to have variations like that, but that's the sort of thing that's nice to know. You won't find that with ball powders. Spherical powders, if you, if you grab, if you grab one charge, if you grab one cartridge from each of those charges and fire them into a, a composite group, you're probably going to be all over the place. You're going to have a large group because that's what they do. They fire here, the next one they fire here, the next one they fire there. They're very, very sensitive. And the other thing is too, that what shoots in your rifle may not shoot in your brother's rifle. It may not shoot in your sister's rifle. It may not shoot in your buddy's rifle. Even though they have exactly the same cartridge, they might even have exactly the same model rifle. Variations that are very, very fine uh, that, that, that have to do with just barrel taper, barrel length, uh, barrel weight, all those things affect the harmonics of the barrel and how that bullet emits from the end of it. So don't ever expect that whatever, whatever load has been the, the family classic for dad's rifle for the last 50 years, doesn't, that doesn't mean that your rifle, even though it's the same exact model and brand, doesn't make any difference. It may not work. It may. You may find that, as, as uh, I have found with, with my rifles and my wife's and my brother-in-law's and my dad's, sometimes the same powder will work, but not with the same exact charge, maybe by going up or down a half a grain of powder. And you get the same, basically the same results, but with a totally different charge, and that's because of the harmonics. There's nodes and overtones that occur with, with, powder, with powders because of the velocities. As the barrel is vibrating, there's secondary and primary over, overtones and uh, vibrations. That bullet, that bullet has to be basically timing itself down that, down that track, down the bore. And if, if, that, if the timing of that vibration doesn't match the timing of the bullet's travel down the bore, it's just not going to come out at the, at the accurate moment. And another thing, too, is that you'll find that most powders will have, will have two or three, you'll, you can find two or three different accurate loads. There's sometimes one that's a primary accurate load that's the very best of all. But if you take, if you take a series of, if you were to take a series of five shots, I think is good for the average shooter because you basically uh, take the highest, the highest charge that is listed in the uh, manual. But you start, with, you start with a charge which is five loads below that. That's where you start. You, you work from the charge that's five loads below that and you work up. And as I've told you before, always do it in pro direct proportion to the size of your case. And you do that very simply. Uh, for a case that holds 50 grains of powder, a 50 grain, 50 grain charge, you, you use a half a grain. In other words, just move the decimal point over two places. So you use a half a grain, 0 0.5. If it's a 30 grain capacity, charge, the maximum charge is a 30 grain charge, then it's 0.3. You move the decimal point over, it is 0.3. Each of your increments is 3 tenths of a grain. And if it's a 60 grain uh, top capacity charge for that powder, not for, not for, don't look at the average powders, but for that particular powder, if you happen to be using uh, IMR 4064 and the top load says that it's 60 grains of powder, then you use 0.3 six grains as an increment. Don't, don't fuss around with anything smaller than that because you're basically chasing your tail. You can, you can find, you can find which, which one of those loads is going to perform the very best. And then, once you find the one that performs the very best, then you can see maybe if there's one side of the, the other of that charge that will work better by, by moving it, uh, say, three-tenths of a grain off of a six-tenths of a grain increment. So that, that can give you a finer, a, a finer tune on that. So that's how you do that. 
in the next in the next video we're going to actually charge these cases up and uh, then we'll proceed to start seeding bullets to all my patreon donors thank you so much for your for your assistance i've got quite a few uh, helpers out there that are keeping me going so that i can buy the components necessary to do this and uh, you know it's, things are getting tough right now financially as everybody is finding out so uh, it's it's uh, it's having an impact on how much I can produce and you know how much how much I can uh, manage to get produced with the type of equipment that I and the amount of equipment that I have. So thank you very much, donors. And if you're not subscribed, hit that hit that subscription button right now and the bell so you know I'm around. Thanks for watching. God bless.